Who's the boss? You. Here are some things to consider when voting, and you better vote. You'll soon see just how important it is to vote and vote carefully. I don't care who you vote for. Just try to make sure they'll do their jobs and have their priorities straight once they get in office. Disclaimer. I'm not an avid politics follower, nor partial to any party. I'm just breaking things down from my perspective. I'm also just a regular person with an average knowledge of politics. I started paying more attention to what's going on in DC during the fiscal cliff and sequestration, when America's global economic standing was at risk. I'm not going to go into all that happened. You can search articles and videos and form your own opinion. From what I knew, my conclusion was the whole government is messed up. Can't they get it together? The Democrats were complaining about the Republicans, and the Republicans were going on and on about Obamacare. I mean, really, get over it and do your job. The whole world was watching, and it was embarrassing that the leaders, leaders, plural, of a superpower couldn't get their act together. After the sequestration, shutdown, and lower credit rating fiasco, some of the leaders admitted that some of their strategists and advisors said that they didn't think their America on the brink of disaster ploy was going to work anyway. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It was like, oh well, back to work, yeah, for you. But some people contributing to your salary lost money or jobs. At that time, I just thought the Republicans were really committed to balancing the budget. And the Democrats were really concerned about the people. Both concerns were important. And they could really balance each other out. It could work. The Democrats' social focus balances the Republicans' fiscal focus. I also realized that the president, not just this president, any president, was not the only one with power in DC. Congress was able to cause a government shutdown and could have brought America down. If that's the message they wanted to send, it was heard loud and clear. Okay, Congress flexed its muscles, the White House called to their bluff, the people were pissed off, and the rest of the world was wondering what the heck is going on. The government finally got it together. Kinda, by making temporary concessions to stop the shutdown. One party got most of the blame and seemed to be moving on. Bonner was starting to act like a leader instead of a pawn. I really felt bad for him. You could almost see the strings on him or see the pressure he was under. I thought someone was trying to ruin his career and was concerned. I'm not saying that in jest. I didn't really blame him because he wasn't acting alone. It seemed like he wanted to do the right thing, but couldn't. But he was up there speaking like a leader who would take charge and wouldn't put up with no more internal BS. Things would get better. Or so I thought. The deadline for the concession was closing in and still no budget deal. Okay, what's really going on here? Again, I'm not going to go into all that happened. You can search articles and videos and form your own opinion. From what I knew, my conclusion was Congress is screwed up. That's where the main problem is. It also didn't seem like the Republicans learned their lesson while the Democrats seemed more contrite. The Republicans were still playing games. Political games are amusing during economically stable times, although it's never all right to go as far as they did. 
the Republicans had too much party fervor, and they were still going on about Obamacare. I was thinking, forget about Obamacare and get to work on what's important right now. Deal with that issue later. The economy is still bad, and this isn't helping. It actually made things worse by unnecessarily putting more people out of work. Then came the unemployment extension bill. It's not a big issue for some people, and whether or not there should have been an extension is irrelevant to this discussion. I'm not going to go into all that happened. You can search articles and videos and form your own opinion. From what I knew, my conclusion was the House is screwed up. The whole thing helped point out where the main problem was in Congress, the House. For those who didn't know or forgot, Congress is made up of the House and the Senate. During the unemployment extension endeavor, the Senate got its act together with Republicans and Democrats working together to come to an agreement. Kudos. It wasn't a majority agreement for one party, but it was a push in the right direction. Then the bill went to the House, and things became clearer. Unfortunately, the Republicans were still being difficult. The balancing the budget focus was starting to seem like a front for party wars. The Senate did all it could to create a bill and method a payment that both parties could agree to, even using some of the Republicans' own methods. Nothing. When one of the House Republicans' criteria was met, there was another excuse. The one that was the end-all criteria was the bill must include a job creation plan. There was a recession going on, and if you didn't want to call it a recession, then how about this? The economy sucked, and it was hard to find a job. Call it what you want. Anyway, a job creation plan was what the whole government had a hard time coming up with. If it were that easy to create one, then the economy would be okay and there would be no need for an extension at all. Job creation was a recession issue, not just an unemployment extension issue. It wasn't fair to put that burden on the unemployment extension bill. Most of the people were okay with the extension, and many experts agreed that it would be good for the economy. So what was the problem? It was a no-brainer comeback move for the Republicans whose image had taken a beating in the public at their own doing. Again, whether or not there should have been an extension is irrelevant to this discussion. The problem was that Bonner wouldn't even allow it to come to a vote after it was modified to try to pacify the House Republicans. That's when the alarms went off. The House Republicans let the people, their bosses, down. They forgot the meaning of being a public servant and were unsatisfactory leaders. At the time, there was pressure for the president to call Bonner and push for the unemployment extension. The president didn't call. What was the point of calling after the House Republicans already stated and showed that this bill was DOA at the House's door? What? Were they on another power trip? Did they want the president to beg? I don't blame the president. I wouldn't have called either. So now is the time to get out and vote because it's obvious that Congress has as much power as the president. They can block the president's moves and have the potential to bring the country down. Fortunately, the people can vote them in. I presented three performance factors to consider when voting in your new employees to help run this great country. 
the fiscal cliff slash sequestration, the concessions deadline, and the unemployment extension bill. Again, the unemployment extension bill was used to help pinpoint the main problem, not to debate whether or not it should have been passed. I try to be impartial and have nothing against the Republican Party. I hope it helps them see that there is something wrong with how the majority of them are choosing to do things, and if it's not the majority, then someone needs to stand up and bring their party back from the brink. I am sure there are intelligent, responsible Republicans who do their jobs and hope they will rise to the occasion because it's getting ridiculous and business as usual is not going to get them out of this. It shouldn't be about who's going to get into office and bring Obama down. It should be about who will get into office, do their jobs, and help America get back on its feet. So, bosses, vote for the best candidate who won't forget about the voters and get party fever once they get in office. I don't care who you vote for. Just pick the person who won't put party over the people. The people first, party later.